Right. <clears throat> so I'm going to call to order the September 9th, 2019 meeting of the Arlington Redevelopment Board, recorded by ACMI. Uh, first on our docket this evening, we have a public hearing, but I'm going to jump around the agenda just for a minute. Uh, we have a couple of scheduling changes to discuss before we move into the bulk of the meeting. And I'm going to move backwards through that. Um, the presentation on housing in Arlington is going to be tabled and continued to October 7th at the request of the town manager. He's not able to be with us tonight and since he's an integral part of that discussion. Uh, based on his schedule, that is the next meeting he's able to attend. So we'll be having that discussion at that point. <coughs> I know Gene, you're being away that, that, that night. That's fine. What time? What day is it again? It's going to be October 7th. Okay. Uh, so time to be determined. Time to be determined on the, on the actual agenda, but that's what we'll be depending on select for. Um, and item number two, which is a continued public hearing on docket 3348 EDR, the applicant there has requested that we continue that also to October 7th. That we'll need to vote on. I can table the other item, but since that's a public hearing, we need to vote on Is that a, that's a stop and shop? That is the CVS. Yeah. Yeah. CVS, yes, sorry. Yes. Yeah. And that was, a, that was a date that the uh, person who we'd like to have here had requested. So uh, motion to continue. Wait till we get to that agenda. Mm -hmm. uh, I just want to do it now. Do you want to do it now? Yeah, because the request will just get out of the way. Yep. Motion. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 Good. All right. So that knocks off item number two and item number four. So at this point, I will move into EDR public hearing docket 3606 for the uh, first house LLC at 1314 Massachusetts Avenue. I'm going to have the applicant opponents come have a seat up front. Please introduce <coughs> yourselves and uh, walk us through what you're asking for, please. Hi, thank you very much. Uh, Mike Betancourt. Uh, I represent First House LLC and uh, Jim O'Rourke here um, to my left and uh, Tom Bernzani and um, uh, Jim's wife as well is here um, tonight. So we are looking to open a restaurant at uh, 1314 Massachusetts Avenue and uh, where the uh, Baylitch 5 and 10 uh, existed for a long time until recently uh, and this comes under the um, uh, B3 Village Business District under 3.4 so uh, it's uh, under your jurisdiction uh, for a special permit. Uh, it will be a pub style restaurant. Um, Mr. Bernazani and Mr. O'Rourke um, have been working together for a very long time. They opened a, uh, opened a similar establishment uh, a few years ago uh, in Winchester and has been uh, very successful. And um, they uh, live locally and are, are looking to um, work in the Heights area um, to uh, increase some foot traffic and, and, and bring along a, a good business for the area. And I'm not sure if you've had an opportunity to review our submissions and if there are any um, questions or uh, any uh, about what we've submitted or any um, omissions that you need us to supplement. Um, <coughs> I think we'll get there if you have anything further to continue on through or we can just move into board discussion. Sure, I think we can move right in. Okay, awesome. I'm excited about it. <coughs> I think it's a good idea. I think it's a good use of uh, an existing space in the neighborhood. I think there's a demonstrated need for, or a desire at least, for something like that in the neighborhood. I live nearby, so certainly uh, concerned about certain things. <coughs> um, one of the things that's different from the other pub type restaurants in town is that there's residences above that. Can you tell us about noise, smoke, food smells, etc.? How do you plan to mitigate that so that those don't negatively impact the people living upstairs? Sure, uh, Jim. I don't know if you the um, as for the ventilation, it'll be out the the very back part of there. Um, there is a roof that extends thirty feet uh, beyond the residence, so the the vents for the, all the food will be back there um, with okay. filters in in them okay. to dampen. And are out. you able to to mitigate any noise from that with dampening? They are. Um, quiet they're you know fishing mm -hmm. so okay I think I don't know if we have what you plan to use in the plans here but to the extent that you're able to shield those with any sort of structure I think we, that's something we'd like to see 
typically. Sure, and, and uh, you know, a, a lot of times you don't really know what the the noise and the impact is going to be until sure. you to, until you, until you open the doors. And um, I, and I will say that's been you know their experience in Winchester as well, and they've been mm -hmm. um, you know good partners with the um, with the businesses that are up there at their existing location and um, you know mitigating the noise and mitigating um, mm -hmm. you know any, any sort of. Uh, um, you know, uh, trash smell or anything that goes along with it. So I think they've accommodated for all of those things yeah. all along. And yeah. I've actually been to the restaurant in, uh, in Winchester oh, several great. times. Oh, great, great, <laughs> great. Familiar with it, I'm a fan. So this would be nice. There are our apartments above um, in Winchester, mm -hmm. and we haven't had any complaints. I will say the times that I've been there, it's it's been fairly quiet. You know, the, the business is there, but the, the atmosphere is fairly quiet and does a good job of fitting into that neighborhood well. Um, what about trash removal? I know you have a pretty narrow alley behind the building okay. to deal with that. How do you intend to do that? So we've been working with the landlord. We're going to see how much trash we um, generate and decide on whether we're going to share a dumpster for the whole building mm -hmm. or if we're going to need our own separate one. Okay. So, so what's in there now is a restaurant, if you're facing the building, there's a restaurant to the left. Correct. And then the building storefronts adjacent to that vacant all the way down to the to that's the a separate cut. building well there's uh Bouvier jewelers okay and um i think one other business yeah the, salon. Yeah, salon. Yeah, on the other side there's, there's nail salon and a hair salon, hair salon and, and, uh, yeah. uh, glasses eye doctor okay good um and then the big question of course is parking <coughs> and i think <coughs> you've had a discussion with the department about this, but I think one of the conditions of our special permit is that you be granted a parking variance by the Zoning Board of Appeals. And um, yeah, I, don't, I <coughs> hate to force you to go in front of another board and, and jump through another set of hoops, but given that there is no parking to be had at all, um, and the department and Inspectional Services has talked to you about this and worked through this, unfortunately, and that's kind of the only way to go about this. Yeah, so any, any permit we grant is going to have that as a condition that you go to the ZBA and get a, a variance on parking. Yeah, I think we're aware of that, and one of the things that we've done as well um, is Jim has spoken to some of the other uh, owners um, around in the neighborhood as well, mm -hmm. um, D'Agostino's in particular, to say, hey, we're, we're going to actively put signage up in um, the Heights restaurant uh, to say if you park there, you know, you're going to be towed. So that I think that there is some mm -hmm. concern and there were some rumors that we were going to be um, using some of that parking as part of ours. But that the way that we've seen it, it's there's plenty of on-street parking um, to service the restaurant. Um, and there will be a lot of foot traffic from the neighborhood. Yeah, I think, I think, I think outside yeah. of normal business hours, you know, parking is, is ample yeah. on street because for the most part there's not a, a lot of activity there after 5 o'clock, which would obviously be your your prime time. And we've yeah. seen through, you know, a couple of, of the public hearings as well uh, locally with the neighborhood action plan that uh, the neighborhood is, is uh, seems somewhat eager for something like this. Mm -hmm. And so I it think is. if we strike the right balance, I think um, it'll be great for existing businesses and some mm -hmm. other opportunities that may develop there. Yeah, yeah. I, and I think that's been the case with some of the other projects that similar projects have mm -hmm. So that's all I have. So okay. I'll move on to Ken. Um, I too are very supportive of this project being in the Heights, but I still have a, certain, a few concerns. Uh, I think Andy's uh, uh, comments are should be backed up with some, like like a site plan. Okay. Uh, I would like to see a site plan locating your establishment, the alleyway, where you can put the trash, how is the trash can be removed. Uh, is there a pickup point? Okay. Uh, trash is only one part of it. I'm assuming you have fire layers, right? Yes. So you can have oil, uh, oil uh, storage somewhere, and that's going to be outside. So uh, I've been doing it in Winchester inside, and then really? the the, uh, the company comes and, and picks it up, and then they remove it. Okay. But uh, there, there will be a contract in place for that, so check with the building official of uh, storage of the uh, um, uh, use fry oil. The oil is, is okay to be stored inside the building. It changes the classification. You need some sort of like a, a room or something. It's you know, just a big barrel of oil. No, we, we do it in the, we put them back in the jugs so it's easier to, to get out of the building. 
Oh, you, oh, you put and that. then the, the company comes and, and they empty it to that truck. a yeah. lot of concentrated fuel in one spot. Um, the other thing I, I, I would like, would like to talk about is your front elevation. You, you're putting in this, uh, this looks like a clear anodized aluminum uh, storefront with operable windows. So during the summertime, you open up the windows so it's indoor, outdoor type of space. The windows will be more sliding. Um, four panes, two, two panes sliding out okay. into the, to the uh, five Could, ones. Couldn't quite really tell, you know? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's so, so, but it's meant to be indoor, outdoor kind of space, right? Yes, okay. with full screens. And that's going to be a, like a clear anodized uh, window frame, or is it black, or is it brown? It's It'll green. be the aluminum. Just clear yeah. aluminum? Yeah. Okay. Uh, do you plan to have any other lighting? I know this is going to be like a pub, so you can have any other, like, bar lights, you know, along the window, you know, like Budweiser and... No, we, do, we don't in Winchester, and I don't plan to do it. Okay, you know, yes. we well. don't want that. Yep. It just doesn't Fully look understood. Quite right with the character of that area yep. there, okay? All right. And then you show these brick pavers out in front of your uh, stop. Are you redoing that, or are you just going to leave what's there? Uh, leave what there. What's there? Okay. So. It was a little hard to understand because it's it's not in the greatest shape. And I'm saying it's your responsibility. I'm just <laughs> right. Uh, yeah. Uh, wondering, you know, since you know, you might take an interest in making the front look a little nicer too. You know. Absolutely. Uh, Something that can be yeah. discussed. And um, you showed the hours of operation on that little thing. That's fine. And uh, where's that plaque? The, the big black, this, uh, I don't know, this looks like a m message board or something, I don't know. Um, the hours of operation. Yes. Sign it. Yeah, there's, it looks like a, it uh, looks like a pilaster, right? Am I wrong with that? I think that's right. just being depicted being on the glass. I think the black is just the outline of the glass. Is that correct? That's correct. This year? Mm -hmm. That's um, correct. Yep. So oh, okay. final on the glass. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, so so that black screen is not like a billboard. No. No. No, it'll be on the on one of the inside, you know, panes of glass. Okay. Near the door. All right. I, I, <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I'm like, where's this going, you know? Yeah, there's not enough room on the sidewalk to there's no, no. put an A-frame out there. No, anything. or anything like that, or have it on mounted onto the side of the building yep. either. Okay, so it's just that pure glass with a awning on it, downlight from this... Uh, yes, goosenecks. Okay. Um, I think uh, if you just work out the parking, you know, uh, do you know what the required parking is that you're asking a reduction in? Uh, it was... One spot for every four seats. Yep. So what? Sixteen, uh, sixteen yeah. spaces. Okay. In our park you have there is twenty nine spots. Yeah, on the on so the angle. On the, yeah. Yes. So it doesn't utilize that as well. No, I'm, I'm not <laughs> saying there's not enough parking there. Yeah. I'm just saying I just want to establish what the parking requirements are and what you're asking for, for reduction in when you present to the ZBA. Yeah, I mean, we'll ultimately be looking to reduce it to zero for, you know, um, in front of the ZBA. I mean, it's, um, there, there's nowhere for us to create parking at this point. It's, um, but, uh, you know, we think it's worth it to, um, <coughs> for this space to be um, recreated in this way for the neighborhood. But you can also, I'm just giving you hints here. Yeah, yeah, sure, absolutely. Uh, no, we appreciate that. But you might want to look into uh, your employee parking uh -huh. and see if you can find uh, employee parking elsewhere. So that would, would relieve some of the... Yep. The congestion around there, uh, either by giving a sense of using bicycles, using mass transit, uh, you know, say we'll give you a free pass yeah. if you take transit to, to our work, you know, that kind of stuff. That's part of the TDM stuff that, uh, that you might want to look into. Yeah, absolutely. And a lot of, uh, you know, Jim's uh, em employees, um, you know, currently in Winchester are, are local, and uh, so a lot of people are dropped off and picked up or uh, or even uh, walk you know so that would be you know ideal for the location as well for employees but we'll certainly make a note of that yep and then if that's the case then you might also want to include do you have room for a basement here yes there's a full basement in there okay. so i'll let dave talk a little more about that but maybe a, like a showering place where they can come and shower if they do ride their bikes in to work 
you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah. Okay. That's all like encouragement stuff to, to make it more less congested by relying on cars. Yeah. That's, that's all I have. Go ahead, David. Yeah, so uh, oh, I'll, I'll just follow up on that point uh, since Ken started discussing it, but uh, it obviously is uh, quite a walkable and, and bikeable area. Uh, there is uh, a connection to the Minuteman Bikeway down Park Ave, uh, quite close to this area. Um, and uh, I'm not, I, I didn't get a chance to, to go uh, up there and, and take another look today, but uh, maybe someone from the department knows what's the bike rack situation in, in that neighborhood? Not many amenities, if any at all, really limited. So, um, I I might um, I don't. We can discuss whether we'd want to make this a condition of a special permit, but um, I'd like to see you guys work with the department to. Uh, get some substantial bike parking installed in the business district there uh, because if you're going to be encouraging people to whether uh, I mean I think the employees is a separate story because that's something you can deal with on your property but if you're going to be encouraging uh, your your customers to, to bike they've got to have some place to lock their bikes and since you don't have any place to do it it's going to have to be uh, on public property and, and I think uh, there there may be some there potential may be space up at the corner <coughs> on Park Ave. Park Ave. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there may be some potential working with the department for for you guys to to uh, to provide that for the town as, as part of this. Yeah. On that corner on that side of the street, there is some hardscaping and some you know landscaping that is very nice, looks very recent. So I, I you know I don't know what um, the yeah I think a neighborhood it, that's the the right corner. I think there's a yeah. neighborhood group that's taken that over, but I think so. Yeah. Maybe we would speak with them as yeah. well about yeah. uh, um, it's a discussion. Yeah, yeah. Sure. and I, I'm I'm not recommending any particular location, uh, but but I think uh, there's an opportunity. Absolutely, uh, yeah. which would benefit not only you but but the rest of of the business community uh, in the Heights Business District. Um, so uh, so uh, it's it's worth. Uh, taking advantage of that opportunity. Uh, as far as um, uh, your employees, um, uh, you you can meet the bike parking requirement. I think which was what two spaces, two two long term spaces. I think so oh yeah yeah. Uh, if you do have space inside, um, um, that certainly would be preferable um, and. The department can work with you uh, for meeting our, our bike parking requirements, which we uh, pretty recently um, uh, updated, uh, and and so they're they're much more extensive than they, they used to be, uh, and and that would apply to both for it, uh, for both uh, outdoor and indoor bike parking. Um, so. You might. Uh, it's preferable for employees uh, to have indoor secure places for them to put bikes. And as Ken was saying, if you really want your employees to to come to work, you might want to look into providing them with with uh, like locker and, and shower type facilities uh, so that they can uh, get cleaned up uh, after they've biked in and uh, and not have to worry about that. Um, and you might you might be thinking about doing that anyway, so your employees can, can get cleaned up when they need to. Um, and uh, what else? Um, um, I thought I read somewhere in here there was a question of needing a historic review. Um, do we need, uh, with re respect to the the changes to the facade, was that what it was, the signage and the awning? Yes, yeah, it's, it's basically any of the changes to the facade, yeah. particularly so, the signage. Yeah. Though, so. so do we also need it to make that a condition of any special permit that, that we would grant? We can do that. We've 
had other applicants with a similar situation who you know are contingent <coughs> upon a successful review and approval by the historical commission. And, and we are scheduled um, are with them as, as well um, for I, I think October first now. So it's right. the next day that we'll be before it's them. Building historic. Do you know that? Mm. Anything else, David? Um, I was just curious, and, and I don't know if, if uh, you know Jenny, um, whether um, any of the other restaurants in, in that neighborhood have, uh, have had to go the variance route with respect to parking. How, how has this been handled in the past? We actually researched this and went back in time to figure out how many restaurants along Mass Ave have had to go before the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance. Mm -hmm. When it's the first time that a restaurant is being proposed and they do not have any available parking or any municipal lot or anything of that nature, essentially zero parking spaces or less mm -hmm. than that even, um, like there's there's literally no room for to install any parking, which is this situation in particular. Yeah. Um, they go to the Zoning Board of Appeals for a variance. There's an, at least three examples of that having occurred when we went back in time to look at that particular situation. And so after con in consultation with the Inspection Services Department, determined that that would be the best thing for this applicant to do in order to you know be able for them to proceed okay. with their project. And it's the yeah. change of use there yeah, the that really triggers the yes, um, zoning uh, board. And, uh, if it was a restaurant, not a restaurant before, there before. That's right. right. So in, and then in the cases where a restaurant has turned over to new hands, they don't go back to the zoning board of appeals. They come back to the redevelopment board to review signage and lighting and other things when necessary, but not because of parking. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, I don't think I had any other questions or comments. I'm also excited to, to see this uh, proposed for the Heights, I think it would be a nice addition to the neighborhood. Thank you. Gene. Um, I agree with my colleagues on the board that um, it can be a very nice addition to the Heights and to the entire town, for that matter. I don't, and I agree with their other comments. I have a question about one statement, which in your um, <coughs> proposal, it's number 12, sustainable building and site design. It says like the heights, which I think was a typo. Okay. It says first house will involve mostly interior construction, which will reflect a commitment to lead standards, resource efficiency, and or environmental quality. We'll submit a checklist identifying the performance objectives for the project. When do you think you'll be able to get us that checklist? So I think once we um, start um, moving a little bit further into the project and start selecting uh, materials, um, I, I think that um, there is a little bit of a question of whether that was required um, of us in order to move forward to where we are now. So um, certainly the materials um, and design of um, the uh, pub that they have now have um, certainly you know low flow and uh, you know uh, LED lighting and uh, and all of the things that you would expect um, you know I, I think uh, what we're you know willing to do that isn't required of us you know is is, is basically a question of cost and efficiency long term so um, certainly um, it's going to be a, a priority for the business owners but uh, uh, you know where they're you know where cost and requirements are you know, kind of uh, um, are, are at odds. Well, there'll have to be some decisions <coughs> made long term. But as of where we are right now, we haven't really selected you know building materials or anything like that. So, what do you what do you think the bylaw requires? I think that it's at your discretion whether or not you require them to comply with the checklist on the interior, which is what they're predominantly doing in this project. When it comes to brand new construction, I think that that is a very different condition and situation. So I would defer to the board on your <coughs> decision making on this particular matter. Yeah, the, only, the only thing exterior Gene I see that I'm putting out there is uh, a rooftop unit, air conditioning and heating. It's going to probably be what a five ton unit on top of the roof in the back. Yes. And then you have your exhaust fans. Yes. And there's not much else that's not much yeah, else. I, I can't see a reason to require it. Yeah, I mean, having you, you know, just saying, you know, we're going to trust you saying you're going to use the high efficiency, uh, 
rooftop unit, you know, and maybe with you know, like economizer mode where if the weather's like this outside, it just brings in outside air that's at the right yeah. temperature. Yeah, so, that's so this is a pretty small space. Why couldn't they use sort of a couple of mini splits that would probably be much more efficient and not as intrusive looking, you know? Then you have them inside the space, so it depends on what the you know design of the interior of this, the space is. I think it's um, you know, pretty accepted practice to use the system that they're proposing. Right, but I'm just wondering whether it makes sense in a large space. Maybe that makes sense, but in a small space, I'm just wondering whether it would make more sense for them to look into doing that. Um. I hear you saying that the mini splits are more efficient and it's more compact, but as a long use of, of the equipment, mini splits are good for seven to ten years, and that's their life expectancy. So, if you use it in a commercial setting, that just doesn't generate the right cost versus uh, buying that. I don't know. I'm, I mean, we're, we're getting a little. Off yeah. your case here, yeah. right? And, and and we have to, you know, speak with the you know, engineer on the project as well because there's, you know, the the hoods that'll be pulling air through and you know make up air that we have to compensate for. So yes. I think it's the makeup air is the big yeah, yes. so. pressure coming in. Otherwise, you know, we open the front doors. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> so I I guess yeah. I'd like them not. I wouldn't require them to do that, but I'd like them to consider it as an option, and also I'd like them to submit. A checklist of what they're doing um, for energy efficiency. Absolutely. Okay. okay. Anything else, Jane? No. Okay. Rachel. I just had a couple questions. I'm also very supportive of this as a business use in the Heights, and um, from living in the Heights, I, I also am um, supportive of your request for the parking relief. I, I think right, there's plenty of parking in the times that your uh, highest traffic will will be there. Um, I had a couple questions for you about the about the storefront specifically. Um, so you mentioned that you're going in front of the historic commission. Um, mm -hmm. Can you tell me what exactly, so the, the, the black band that you have above the awning, is that, are you planning on painting the sign band or putting in a sign, um, a sign backer with the letters affixed to it? I so think that was just painted. Yeah. That's going to be yeah. painted. Yeah. Okay. The same color as the, the sign. Okay. I think that with historic, you might have better luck if you actually painted, kept the sign band painted, um, to match the rest of the, the the building. Okay. Um, and you know, treat it much like the sign bands are in that, general area, mm -hmm. and uh, just use a, a backer panel okay. with the with the sign affixed to it. I think that that. Um, might be more in keeping with the <coughs> intent of some of the sure. um, what the historic commission will be looking for. Um, and just had a question for you on the um, storefront here, the, the red below the um, the uh, existing storefront windows. Is that something that you're look? Are you replacing that entire storefront in in full, or just yes. the windows itself? Yes. Yeah, so that will be similar materials, uh, just in black. Just in black. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that color won't remain there. Great. So you're taking off the brick <coughs> knee wall there. Uh, it's, it's. I don't think it's not brick. Yeah, it's um, looks either like aluminum a, or. Like, yeah, uh, it looks like a. Okay. Aluminum it's, it's, yeah. It's been there for 70 it's years. Not in so great I don't shape. Know exactly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm <laughs> yeah, glad to hear you're replacing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Great. So um, the nail place next door is brick, right? Then, I saw some brick somewhere. The nail place is brick. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay, there might be some behind the metal panel, I'm not sure, but it's a definitely a metal panel case right okay. now. Um, let's see. And then the only other question I had was just about um, loading. Uh, is that through the through the front? Only similar to the business next door? There, there'll be a second egress and towards yep. the back, so um, during uh, business hours, mm -hmm. Um, it would be through the back. Okay. Uh, we do a very early shipping um, when we get our main food in a couple times a week. Yep. Um, that's a key drop where they come, you know, between six and seven in the morning. Okay. And they have a key and they just go in and 
put the stuff in the walk-in or the freezer or Great. dry storage. Okay. So hopefully they're not out, out front for too long. Okay. We will you know, try and get people to use the, the, the back entrance. Okay. So any questions I have? Okay. Any other questions from the board at this time? If not, I'm going to open up <coughs> for public comment. Uh, this is a public hearing, so you will be required to give me your name and address. When you speak, please raise your hand. I'll call on you. Uh, <coughs> we'll move through the process. Please be respectful. And uh, we'll go on. So if there's any public comment. Yes. Uh, Bob Radosha, Columbia Road. I have two questions, basically. Hours of operation. Establish that we'll be opening at 11 a.m. Okay. Um, the dining room will close, um, well, the kitchen will close um, Sunday and Monday, 9.30 at 10 o'clock. And then um, towards the weekend, the kitchen will close at 10.30. But the bar will be open till I believe it's 12 o'clock in the town. Okay. Uh, any live music? No. How many square feet is that? 2,100. Thank you. Yeah. Yes, sir. Hi, Sam know, um, I'm partnership in the real estate across the street. I also have a retail business. Um, Rachel, you had mentioned that you're comfortable with the parking. Um, what do you foresee for the um, parking that will be available and how do you guys for the investment? Question for the... I guess you, you had said that you thought yes. it would, it would work fine. Uh, absolutely. So, you know, in the evening, um, you know, the past couple evenings since this came up on the docket, I've been taking a look at, at the parking situation, especially at the Angle Inn on Park Street. And, you know, after 5, 6 o'clock at night, there, are, I think, are two cars, typically, <laughs> um, at most parked in, parked in that area, um, which seemed to be the, the times that, you know, would be your greatest business hours so you know even I'll use last Friday night 7 p.m. I drove through on my way home from work there were six spaces on that Ave right in front of your restaurant even with home taste completely full people waiting out out of the door and every but spot <coughs> only angled in but two were free so um, you know even during the day um, when with the business um, businesses packed towards you can roll everybody else fully packed there were still Space is open on Mass Ave, and I didn't see many people parked on on Davis, or you know, it's probably half full on uh, on Park. So to me, it seems like there's plenty of opportunity. Obviously, that's not this group will not make that de determination. The Zoning Board of Appeals will, but um, to me, it seems like there's a lot of opportunity for their patrons. Um, hopefully, many will walk <laughs> from from the neighborhood, or but you know, it seems like there's plenty of parking available as well. I, I agree with Rachel. I mean, I live in a neighborhood to myself, and I do drive by there quite often. And uh, I, I don't see it, it taxing uh, parking there in, in the evening. You know, uh, during the daytime, let's say around noon or lunchtime, yes, it's a little more crowded. Okay. A lot more crowded. I mean, if I want to go grab a sub at your place, it's sometimes it's a little challenging. I'm maybe two blocks out. The park to get uh, to get over to your place, but uh, they still do it. But we have a lot. I don't. <laughs> that would be my first choice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just I'm just concerned with the amount of time that I think the patrons would be into the restaurant if there's 24 seats and I don't know how many bar stools. I mean, potentially in the peak time, I think it could take 30 spaces. Or, uh, and at peak time, I think those spaces are available. Yeah, I think I agree, I agree with that. At peak yeah. time, when, when the other <coughs> businesses that operate more on a more traditional business schedule are closed, there are, there are 30 spaces empty between Daniel Street and uh, the bus stop. I think there's, there's plenty of space within one. And along Park Ave, along the Angle Park. And along, yeah, yeah, I think through those. Yes, sir. Mark Halsino, out Flint Street. So I'm a neighbor up there. I'm very enthusiastic about this. A uh, couple questions about once again on the parking in Surrey Road. Even when the height starts fills up down there, people start double parking on Surrey Road, turning that into a one-way street. So that might be the only problem I think around that area is really, especially since one way and people might start doing loopies around there. Uh, that that might be a, a problem. Uh, the other one. 
couple of months ago, I attended the Transportation Board meeting, and they were talking about doing something with Paul Revere intersection and that and those those slots. And so I don't know if you talked to them get to figure out what they're doing on that whole thing there. Mm -hmm. So I know the applicant is in regular contact with the department. Before we get too far down the road of parking. Um, <clears throat> what's going to happen here is, is this board's going to make a decision based on the special permit for the change of use here. And the applicant's been asked to go before the ZBA for the parking variance. So we can ask them, we can tell them what, what our thoughts are on parking. The ZBA is ultimately the board that's going to make that decision. Uh, and they'll be in touch with the Transportation Advisory Committee as well to figure out, make sure that <clears throat> one hand knows what the other's doing for, for sure. Yeah. This is, I guess it's probably out of the, your hours of operation, though. Uh, there's only one other bar that's open that late here at Common Ground, and they got a, a variance for that. Uh, so I don't know what that's not really this problem here, but I don't know how you're going to adjust that for staying open late because everything else around here closes around 10 o'clock. Uh. Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, my concern was just parking as well. Name and address, please. Oh, uh, sure. The Finn Finn address is uh, Sandwich, Massachusetts, uh, 109 Reflection Drive. And, uh, I am partners in uh, real estate um, with the parking lot with San Vegas, you know, and, and uh, you know, we respect what's going on, we just are concerned about the parking, um, mainly for our tenants um, that to look at it. If, uh, when people, uh, actually, uh, I've known him a long time too. Yeah, I'm concerned about that too. If uh, <laughs> people can't get spaces, um, it's going to be tough for. Uh, Success, I would say. You know, so mm -hmm. you, when you fly around, you can't get space. Uh, you tend to go someplace after a while. So I'm just, I'm afraid of the fact. I know that you've already had conversations uh, about that. So, but just bring bring that up as well. Okay. Thanks. Anyone else? Comments, questions, concerns, members of the public. Seeing none, I'll turn it back to the board for next steps here. To take a couple of asks. But nothing, <coughs> I'll defer to my colleagues here. Uh, aside from the request for a site plan and possibly a landscape plan, if there's any intent to landscape from the building, I think we could turn that to uh, department approval mm -hmm. and allow these gentlemen to move forward this evening. Neighborhood bike parking. Yeah. 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 The bike. Yeah. 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 I think we can, we can add that into oh. a contribution. Sure. Absolutely. And the checklist on efficiency. Yes. And based upon the discussion about parking, I just wonder, and I know this is going before the ZBA, and it's to whether to grant a variance or not, I just wonder whether it would be helpful if their website would indicate where people should go to park and where they shouldn't, mm -hmm. as, um, and maybe we can add that as a condition that they need to get work with the staff on what's going to be on that website about <coughs> parking. I think that's, that's, that's fair, and that's a good suggestion, is that... <coughs> Parking information be added there, and then also available at the host stand, the front of the building. Sure. I plan on putting it behind the bar in the bathrooms. Yeah. Um, yeah. And everywhere. I don't want somebody right. coming out from having dinner. Yeah. And then another hundred and twenty-five dollar tow fee. No. And so I have no doubt that if you, if you want to be successful, you're going to be a good neighbor and, and work with. Yeah. Your, your, your neighbors we've, we've had and, and everyone else that's around there to make sure that you're not. Uh, yeah. Your customers aren't camping in their lot. So, so let's make that a uh, condition. Yeah. We also add uh, the roof plan for the rooftop units. Yes. Yeah. Sure. Just want to show the roof plan. Sure. Yeah. That the rooftop, where the rooftop units will be located, so it doesn't affect the neighbors behind you up on the hill, because it's kind of a steep yeah. hill back mm -hmm. there. Straight up. And then um, also the people above you, just Jenny can uh, yeah. do that as well. <laughs> and I think a trash yeah. removal plan and a transportation man transportation man management plan. Go ahead, David. Well, I, and I just wanted to, that, did you also get um, working with the department uh, for compliance with the required on-site bike parking? Yeah, mm -hmm. I have that. Okay, great. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it needs to exist. Right. Um, I also have the updates to the sign band and the painting. Great, oh, I didn't yeah. capture the exact language on the sign band. I'll work with Aaron on that. Okay. So can I say and then the last device. thing was the uh, fulfillment yeah. of lead by providing the checklist and working to consider energy efficient measures as part of the interior renovation. Yeah. Jane mentioned that, so I think we'd like to see that as well. But 
Go a motion ahead. to approve this project. Docket. Oh. 3606. 3606 with the following conditions. As provided by the director. I mean, I, yeah. okay. I have them. As they're, all all they're all over the place okay, right now. We've repeated them all, but I can read them back quickly, which is uh, contribution to a bike rack in the neighborhood within the business district. I don't know exactly where, so that's not the exact language. Please don't quote me. <laughs> um, <laughs> providing a roof plan to identify the location of units and screening for the units. Um, fulfillment of lead by providing the checklist as required and consideration of energy efficient measures as part of the interior renovation. Um, a site plan which identifies the dumpster and any uh, available landscaping or um, I think we're just going to call it landscaping for now. Okay. Um, updates to the sign band and the painting um, and did I miss, did, was there another one? The sorry. Notices about parking. The notice about the advertising, right, sorry, advertising well, website for and on site parking, notice about parking. Uh, directing people to, d directing patrons and employees to available parking. Okay. Is that all of That's everything. Okay. So noted. All right. Second. All right. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Good luck with the CBA. Thank you. Appreciate your time. Looking forward to it. Thank you. All right. So I am closing public hearing dock at 3606. Uh, for anyone that came in late, uh, <coughs> docket number 3348, second on our second item on our agenda this evening has been continued to October 7th, and the presentation on housing in Arlington has also been continued to October 7th. The request of the town manager. So I'm going to move to item number three, which is the open forum. So if there's anyone that would like to speak on any matters not on the agenda this evening, I will call on you. Please state your name and address, and we'll go. Patricia. Thank you. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. I come here tonight as a former charge member of Arlington's Affordable Housing Task Force, which, like the residential study group, was charged by town meeting to study certain aspects of housing and worked at that for over a decade, among other things. <coughs> we presented the inclusionary zoning affordable housing bylaw to town meeting, which approved it. Arlington's master plan makes clear on page 88 that the only kind of housing that Arlington needs is affordable housing together with <coughs> senior housing, both market rate and affordable for over 55 seniors. Any other kind of housing is not a matter of need. Additional housing construction is a matter of choice, <coughs> usually of developer choice or policy initiatives of um, regional planners and their local representatives among you. Additional market rate housing units are now endangering the town's financial stability. The chairman of the finance committee made a statement when speaking to town meeting this year that development now needs to be for commerce and business, not residential, which he pointed out costs the town more than it brings in a taxes. Dense residential development especially drives up pressure on schools. Arlington is already the second most dense town in Massachusetts. The drive to increase density is being done by advocating for street walls of mixed use housing <coughs> with little or zero setbacks, no open space, large winter shadows, no trees, token requirements for affordable units which can be easily gamed, and storefronts that remain <coughs> empty. Arlington uh, Town Meeting has voted no action on these articles, and the mayor of the city of Medford has withdrawn the mixed-use proposals from that city's consideration. If mixed-use is to remain a choice for Arlington, it should be with a requirement of at least 50% of the building to be for commercial and business uses. In addition, the escape clause for developers, section 524 of the zoning bylaw, whereby mixed use building owners can switch a mixed use building to all residential use, 
essentially predominantly luxury units should be eliminated. If that is not done, then mixed use zoning could cause unsustainable town finances unless there are constant overrides, gentrification, and massive displacements and evictions from our currently reasonably affordable rental units. There are many small, reasonably affordable homes in Arlington, but these are the very homes that are being targeted by developers for demolition and replacement by much larger, more expensive buildings. Two years ago, town meeting, realizing the dangers of this situation for Arlington residents, established the Residential Study Group to study the teardown situation. However, although the study group has worked to document interesting data and develop helpful legislation and the Good Neighbor Agreement, that agreement is often simply ignored. In conclusion, I point out to you that the specific recommendation in the master plan for dealing with the teardown problem is found on page 88. And in accordance with that, I recommend two actions which should be taken. First, floor area ratio specifications should be instituted in R1 and R2 districts in order to limit the proliferation of teardowns of small, reasonably affordable homes. Second, the setbacks be carefully and selectively increased for residential zones. There is a third suggestion which I would like personally to make, and that is that you add the definition of foundation to the zoning bylaw as you agreed to work on that earlier this year. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shelton. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Don Seltzer, Irving Street. Uh, I have a few comments that I prepared that relate directly to the town manager's presentation on housing. That was fine for the safe thing, but I understand it's not going to be given. Um, it's highly data intensive, a lot of numbers, so I've condensed it into three slides. To Why show. don't you provide those to us and we'll discuss those when the town uh, manager I would rather here. present it to this other audience here and the people who are watching on ACMI rather than having it buried just within your board. Well, it won't be buried. It'll be a matter of public record at that point. No, I'd like to present it publicly. List. I don't think we have the ability to do that. Oh, yes, we do. I'd, I'd rather see it ahead of time and have it as part of the public record. Uh, d does the rest of the board agree with this? Are you interested in seeing the data that I've researched? If it's, if it's particularly data intensive, I'd like to have an opportunity to look at it and have I you give the opportunity to, also, to do but it. Is there any reason why you're excluding these people from seeing it? No, I'd like to have them have actual copies in their hands and to look at. They will have it also. Do you have copies with you? No, but I'd like to, I'd like to present it. It's not something we usually do. You have an opportunity to present it during the town manager's speech. And I'll defer to the rest of the board. I mean, we usually have an opportunity to review the materials that are going to be presented yeah. beforehand. Right. Um, and I, they're, I they're posted they're online good. for us. They're, made, they're, not they're just a matter for of public record, not I just put up on a screen. I have sent you similar information in the past as official correspondence, and it has not been posted in the official correspondence for the board. It has not been made available to the public. It's been ignored. It, it seems as if this is specifically applicable to the information that's going to be presented at the October 7th meeting, that submitting the information ahead of time and giving us the opportunity to make it available at the time that we're discussing that information might might actually be um, beneficial to, to, when you're, to when you're presenting it. Is there any harm in you seeing it tonight? And I can also present Again, I, I, I would I, I don't know I if I'll be able to be here on October 7th. I don't know if you're going to postpone it again. Provide the material to us. It will be made uh, It will be made available online. It will include it as part of the official correspondence and part of the, the agenda for the October 7th meeting. Will you go back and uh, include the um, correspondence that I sent you to the um, regarding the hearing on the um, Heights Hotel? Um, and put that into the public record also? If it hasn't been included, we'll make sure that that's corrected, but I'm sure that everything has been included as, as part of our agenda. Thank you. Yes? Uh, Jennifer Seuss, 45 Teal Street. Um, I just want to speak to you. There are, to, to sort of make you aware, and you probably are aware, that there are many, many people in town who are excited about having more housing, 
um, having housing diversity. In fact, almost everyone I talk to is, is in favor of it, with caveats, you know, subject to looking at the proposals, obviously, um, both for two reasons, both to create the kind of dynamic, inclusive town that we want to live in, um, with the kind of housing diversity that we don't currently have, and for moral reasons, frankly, the feeling that there is a housing crisis in the greater area, and that every town and community has to do their part, and no town can say, oh, well, we won't be part of the solution, that we feel that there's sort of a real moral imperative here. But I implore you, <laughs> no one likes to be laid at it. Um, everything that I've seen successfully happen in town has happened after at least a year of big open forums where everyone has the opportunity to hear the proposal, to chew it, to express their concerns, to um, give ideas, um, if, you know, changing the traffic pattern in East Arlington, uh, redistricting that we've done, uh, certainly the new high school. You know, so, so not only was there many years of, of discussion in private in meetings like this, but there was at least a year of big open public forums where lots of people had an opportunity to, to think about it and express their opinions. And I think, and I encourage you to do that, I think when you do that, you will find that the community is, I mean, obviously divided, but I think it's really valuable for the community to hear each other's perspectives. And so I, I just encourage you to do that. Thank, Thank you. you. A, lot of, a lot of perspectives. Mr. Holman. Aaron Holman, 12 Whittemore Street. Uh, I'm concerned that the machinery of town government uh, particularly as it relates to real estate development, is really starting to show some cracks, some failures. I'm not talking about the failure of democracy. I'm talking about the actual execution of the cops, the, mach the machinery of town government. And I'd like to cite a couple of, of examples of the things that heighten my concern. The common denominator is that they all have to deal with real estate development. So first, uh, going back to this spring uh, with Article 16, uh, the Redevelopment Board, over mostly opposition, approved Article 16, and then after town meeting indicated it was pretty clear on Monday night that it wasn't going to pass town meeting held, uh, the ARB held an illegal meeting in order to change its vote to no action. Now, if you really believe that <coughs> this was the appropriate thing, I think you should have stuck with your recommendation rather than change the vote, particularly in an illegal meeting, to no action. Uh, this was really inappropriate. So I'm concerned about that. Another example, a little bit of forgetting about property. Uh, the town accidentally discovered that it owned the Disabled American Veterans Club, something it forgot about. I, I wish the town would forget that about my place and I wouldn't have to pay my tax bill for a while, but I don't think that's going to happen. So first, it forgot that it owned it. Then it realized that it owned it. Then it tried to figure out what to do with it. Had a fairly limited, perfunctory attempt to find reuse then a fairly limited, perfunctory attempt to find buyer for it, then it cut the price, and then it sold it to the former town assessor. This doesn't look good. A third example, in August, somebody found out that the bylaws, which town meeting had passed, had not been submitted to the attorney general the way they are legally required to do, and have been required to do every year. And by an amazing coincidence, we had some controversial real estate legislation in there. Meanwhile, because of that delay, uh, certain bylaws are not being implemented, including bylaws which would bring some significant financial revenue to the town. And the town is losing that. Uh, the tree ordinance, just as one example only, I'm not going to get into talking about trees. The fact is, until the bylaw is approved, it cannot be implemented and enforced, nor can those fees. And this just strikes me as an incredible failure of the town government. They all involve real estate and real estate development at a time when it is clearly uh, quite in the news. 
So I just want to indicate my concern. You're seeing similar things happen in other towns. I'm sure you're all aware of the fact that in Boston, somebody went to dealing with a real estate permit was indicted on a bribe. Uh, I just want to raise the concerns. I would like things to be done appropriately and properly. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Preston. Thank you. <clears throat> I only wish that these zoning changes that have been introduced um, would bring diversity. Unfortunately, they're going to reduce diversity because um, if you see all of those apartment buildings, very modest ones on Mass Ave, from Arlington Center to Cambridge, they're very basic. And they are what are often called naturally, uh, naturally occurring affordable housing. They will be torn down. There will be lots of displacement of people of modest means. That's going to reduce diversity in this town. Now, um, <clears throat> what they're going to be replaced with according to the Harvard Center for Urban Studies, is luxury housing. That's what the market is, that's where the profits are, and that's what we've seen so far. Um, two, um, I'd like to talk about mixed use, because it's not mixed use. It's luxury apartments with an empty storefront underneath in order to get some special zoning considerations. And if we're going to go continue to talk about mixed use, someone ought to take, it would probably take one day to study what's happened to mixed use since um, they were allowed to have mixed use. And of course the prime example is, I think it's 887 Mass Ave, did I get that right? The one right next to Stock and Shop. Um, it, um, how many years has that been? No, a year? Two years? came through here, so anybody know? It's been quite a while. Um, it has empty storefronts and it has luxury apartments. The luxury, there are four of them, so there are no affordable units. In fact, they, last time I checked, were $3,000 a month. That's $36,000 a year. No Arlington school teacher can afford to live there. So these are luxury apartments. Third, Community participation, and I want to thank you now of having regular participation in the ARV. And I hope other town committees will do the same. Um, it was over the last year far too managed. We had outside people come in to do the agenda and to run the meeting. It gave little, little chance for Arlington residents to really speak up and talk with one another. I remember the famous, I think we called it by invitation only, unless you found out about it from someone, meeting a year ago in December, which I found out about and finally got myself invited to. A lot of interesting things did come up. Co-housing, over 55 housing, um, apartment buildings which are owned by the tenants and run by the tenants. But at the end of the meeting, it was announced that the zoning bylaw changes had already been written and they were on the way to the ARB. The best question of the evening was the last one. Well, how are you going to incorporate what we've said if the article's already been written? So I think as we move forward, we have to really talk about authentic community participation because people have good ideas and I think we should listen to them. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Evans. When I live in Orchard Place, um, I hope you all have wonderful summers. Um, I want to speak also about the issue of displacement in regards to the housing plans, because I think one of the possible large and really damaging unintended consequences of this is that we could actually see a net loss of affordable units. There are no provisions in the housing production plan as it's currently been presented that offer protection to existing residents, whether that is tenants or small businesses. And as Ms. Preston pointed out, these garden apartments up and down Broadway and Mass Ave are hot, flaming, bullseye targets for developers because they are large lots. Um, they would be demolished. 
there would go, there would uh, be new buildings built and there would be market rate, primarily market rate with either the 15 or 20 percent affordable depending on, on where we wind up. However, what we have now, um, according to the 2017 U.S. Census Community Survey, the median rent in Arlington is $1,593. The 2018 HUD set rate for two bedrooms uh, considered affordable is $1,647. So right now, we have apartments that are renting below what the HUD rate would be. And those are the apartments that are going to be, that are, are really in the sites of redevelopment and they're gonna be wiped out. So this is why I say that we could see a net loss of affordable units. Um, rather than an increase in the kind of diversity of housing that is available to everybody here. So I hope very much that the board will keep this in mind and think about ways to protect the people who live here now. And I should also add one last statistics. 39% of the residents of our occupied units are renters. Of those, 21% are seniors. These are people who don't have a lot of leeway when it comes to figuring it out all new again. They get pushed out, their building gets sold, they're gone. These people are up a creek. So I hope that we will be able to keep this in mind as we move forward. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Alex Bagel, Wyman Street. I'd like to support your efforts um, in the reexamination of our zoning. I think our country has used zoning laws as a racially explicit method of excluding people from communities up through 1968 and in 1974. Two, Arlington declared a moratorium on development, and then in 1974, recodified its zoning to be exclusionary. And the last 45 years of that zoning regulation has given us the inflated housing prices that we have, and has resulted in an economic segregation, which is allowable when the racial segregation, the explicit racial segregation, was finally banned by federal law in 1968. I think the current zoning plan needs to be re-examined in the light of that and the effects of that that it has had. I also think it is developers who built most of Arlington and to vilify them in the interest, including the pillboxes that we have on Mass Ave, is a bit unfair. Thank you. Okay. Other comments? Moving on to discussion of the meeting minutes. <coughs> should be our last agenda item this evening, so we'll go to uh, Monday, July 1st. If you're leaving, please do so quietly. The board still has business to discuss. Uh, I ran through these. I didn't have any changes on July 1st, but carry down the line. That may have been our first meeting where uh, Rachel was with us. Hmm. Go ahead, Jean. I, I didn't have any changes. I don't think there's anything incorrect, but I do have a request for future minutes. I, I think the minutes don't give us enough information. Um, for example, the first large Don. paragraph. Pardon? For example, the first large paragraph after the first sentence talks about changes that we ended up voting on to what was presented to us, but they're not set forth in the minutes, so there's no way to know other than to compare what we got and what was filed. And I don't think that's the way the minutes should be. Similarly, on the last paragraph, just before the motion to adjourn, it again talks about broadening the scope, and that's true, but I think we need to have the minutes in the future explain what those are. I think these are more general, at least than I would like. But I didn't see anything wrong with these minutes. I just think that we need some more detail about those things. Not what everyone said, but when we made some changes in what's presented, I think, and we vote for that, I think the vote should indicate what the those specificity are. With the mm -hmm. specificity. Okay. Yes. Okay. Thank you. We can have staff focus on that in the future. Certainly. Other than that, I'd move to accept uh, the minutes of July 1st, 2019. Okay. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 
All right, moving on to July 22nd, which was lengthy, but I think they did a pretty good job. The only question I had was on the next to last page, sorry, the next to next to last page, mm -hmm. uh, there's a paragraph that says Sherry Barrow. Was it Sherry Barron or is Sherry Barron? Barron, it is yeah. Barron. Uh, yes, I'm I see make sure that, that she's now. recognized. Right. And it's Sherry, isn't it? It's, it's a, a, a I, I. Yes. And that was really, honestly, that's the only thing that I saw in the, there that needed to be amended. I had a number of things. Um, the third paragraph, the one that starts with Ken Ingber, about the fourth line in says, this property is in the B2 zoning district, but I think it's in both B2 and B... It is B2 and B4. And B4, so I think that needs to be... I think this be. is just referring to 1207 and that Well, sentence. except, but the previous, well, I think um, I think that's what that was. Supposed Can it to be, be amended then to say that 1207 Mass Ave yeah. is in the B2 zoning yeah, district? Okay. Because say. earlier this property refers to 1207 to 1211, mm -hmm. so I think that would make it clear. On the second page, or that or say that 1207 is in. So actually, what, yeah, well, that's 1211 what, is in what you could say here is 1207 Mass Ave is in a B2 yeah. zoning district, right. and the next sentence that begins 1211 Mass Ave is currently on a repair business right. with a single apartment on the second story is and zoned before. Yes, that would that yeah. that would be a nice clarification. On the next page, on two pages over, the one that starts with my name, there are some run on sentences and some things that are incorrect. I actually looked at the uh, video today because mm -hmm. I couldn't I couldn't remember. But the first sentence should end with, with the word trees period. Mr. Benson has about street trees, period. And the second one should be, he is concerned about. That's fine. The third is fine. Um, the fourth is fine. Except, it should say, Mr. Benson said that he reviewed the lead checklist and currently, so we need to work currently between checklist mm -hmm. and currently, and currently the plans do not qualify to be certified. Um, then the last sentence, is also run on. It should be Mr. Benson also said he has concerns about parking, period. And then it says he corrected um, the submission, which indicated that people would be charged to park off site, but they would be charged to park on site. That's what I said. And I was concerned, and Ed, and is concerned about what they would do about overflow parking when all the current lots or when the current lot is full. So that needs to be corrected there. And then on the last page, there are two votes where both um, Mitchell and I abstained, so it couldn't be four to zero. They have to be three to zero. Uh, they're near the end. It says the chair introduced the second agenda item, including the all meeting minutes. And then Mr. Watson second should be approved three to zero. Mr. Benson and Ms. Embry abstain. Mm -hmm. The next paragraph, same thing. Approved three to zero, Mr. Benson and Ms. Sembury abstain. Mm -hmm. So that's what I've got. I just have one item on uh, page two of the meeting minutes. Um, the paragraph that starts with my name, um, where we, it's in the middle of the paragraph where I talk about um, the materiality for the facade of the building where, where mm -hmm. he's talking about stucco, I had uh, recommended they look, that they look at clabbered or masonry, um, brick and stone, you know, or, or both masonry, but I'd also wanted him to look, look at clabbered as an option. Okay. Um, I had a couple of clarifications in the paragraph of my comments on the, um, the hotel project. Um, I'm not sure what page that is. That's also the second page. Sorry. It is the second page, I guess. Yeah. Mr. Watson requested a more detailed traffic study, that paragraph. Mm -hmm. um, so there's a sentence in the middle of the paragraph. They do not want to make the existing conditions in the area worse. Um, it's unclear who they refers okay. to. Um, I, I think that makes sense. Um, uh, I think that's referring to just the project generally should yeah, not make project. traffic conditions right. worse. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like 
it's talking about bicyclists, but it isn't. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> traffic is traffic. Um, and uh, later, uh, second to last sentence, because of the location embedded in a neighborhood, we need to understand the site's relationship to the existing mm -hmm. neighborhoods. Um, that seems a little repetitive, but I'm not quite sure what <laughs> Actually, I was saying. I don't know what that means. Uh, I think I know. I, I, to this, so <laughs> I think because it's so close in right. proximity to a residential neighborhood, the idea was to have a deep relationship to the surrounding yeah. neighborhoods. The, the or idea structures. was how this would relate to know. the surrounding structures yeah. um, and residents. Yeah, I know that's I what we were talking just be about. Because of the location. Yeah. yeah. The project. Yeah. The just site, take out embedded in the neighborhood. The site's relationship yeah. to the existing neighborhood should be considered. I think if we yeah. just strike embedded in a neighborhood, yeah, we can I think that cover. I think that'll cover it. Okay. Yeah, and uh, I did. <laughs> and in the last sentence, I did in fact want a comparison of a uh, shadow study of existing conditions to proposed conditions, but not just for the neighbors to review. I also wanted us <laughs> to see that. <laughs> right. Okay. Yes. I'm just going to strike that last part. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? June 22nd, July 22nd, sorry. Okay, so I would take a motion to approve those minutes as amended. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And that is, well, before we wrap up, we have a lot on the agenda for the 7th now. Um, and we we'll probably have a crowd. Right, we have, so I am, um, actually. so uh, let me jump to the 21st really quickly. Um, I, that is the continued hearing for the hotel. Mm -hmm. I have the auditorium reserved. October 21st. Yeah. Yeah. Or okay. the 21st. And they're ready? Well, that's the date. We're, that's we're still the date that it was continued to. Okay. Um, on the 7th, um, I have put in a request with the woman who manages the reservations for other rooms in town hall. Okay. Um, and have asked for the Lions hearing room for that evening. Um, and th that evening we have the continued CBS yep. housing in Arlington yep. and then potentially another public hearing yes. that we're still awaiting. That should be sending a representative. Yes. Yeah. Um, and then September 23rd, which is actually your next meeting, you'll have the, we believe, the, the only item at the moment is the, uh, the reopening of the public hearing for uh, 19R Park, which is Downing Square oh, right. Housing Corporation, to review their final, hmm. final documents. Is it just Downing Square or is there another one? No, it's just Downing Square. Yeah, okay. just Downing Square. And actually, um, it, it, we're, we don't believe that we need to reopen the public hearing as nothing has material changed. Um, it is just the, the standard condition in the decision where the ARB has the final opportunity to approve final specifications of the buildings before it moves on to the building permit review. Okay. Just for <coughs> future clarification, um, anyone who would like to speak during open forum is more than welcome to, but uh, earlier today, discussed that if there are materials to be presented that I will request that those be presented as part of the agenda and not as a presentation so that we're not surprised by uh, additional information and we have time to ask responsible and appropriate questions for the way it's coming for us. Mm -hmm. If it's a if it's more of a discussion item than a presentation. Makes sense. That makes sense. I, I think that should also hold uh, during public comment, during public hearings. Mm -hmm. um, if if anyone if, if any member of the public wants to make a presentation as part of their comments, mm -hmm. I, I think that's that's okay. Yeah. But that but that should be seen. Yeah, and I'm happy to engage published. it. <coughs> but uh, I would like to to have staff and the board prepared. Absolutely, I think that's only fair, and that that gives us an opportunity to take those comments 
uh, <clears throat> to review those more, more thoughtfully. Yeah. And I, I actually I was hoping Mr. Seltzer would when and I was going to extend the that, meeting that because I, to him. because I wanted I wanted to uh, say to him uh, uh, that I, I did find his 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 comments uh, at at uh, at the um, at the public hearing on mm -hmm. the hotel project to be to be informative. Mm -hmm. um, just despite uh, what what he thought uh, our opinion was, yeah, and, I'm happy to and, review uh, his data. He's but, done his but I work, I but would have appreciated getting that information ahead of time in order to be able to digest mm -hmm. it and yeah. and, uh, and had he sat here, I respond think we, to we it would have yeah. extended that courtesy that invitation to him. Can, can so. we put up a notice to that effect on the website or with each? Yeah, and um, I, th I think we're sort of feeling our way that, through this. Right, right, since and, it's and new, it makes sense to feel our way through it. But I think if that's going to be the standard that we're asking people to meet and I'm fine with that I think it's appropriate that there should be something on the website or the meeting minutes that basically says that mm -hmm. so people know that if they want to do a presentation we needed some period of time in advance an opportunity to review it yeah. and, and I will and allow make it. it part of you know what, what I will I will ex I will allow it and I will accept it as part of public comment I just don't want any Surprises. And, so and it's just I, a matter of keeping these meetings orderly and fair. Well, and and I guess the other part is timing. I mean, I think at some point we have to think about setting a limit on how much time each people have because it's great to do this, but people will go on and on and on. So mm -hmm. I think the other thing we should think about, and again, maybe it's something to see how it goes, is set time limits on how much, you know, the maximum time people have for a presentation if they want to. Make one during the open forum. Mm -hmm. Okay. Make one more request. Yes. On the August, no, sorry, October seventh, uh, hearing for the CBS, can I request some documentation? You can request it. I can see what I can do. What, what is your request? I am asking for the last three years police reports on that property. Okay. Um, every with time, the, every with time the they get called there, they, they write a report. Um, so I can see what I can do. What I was actually planning to provide is a memo that will be, that will have um, inspection services, health and uh, public safety commentary from whatever has been happening at the property and how up to date it is and whether or not it's in code compliance. Um, so I'll be able to provide that that evening. I'll ask um, the police department to see if they can provide something in more detail. Yeah, so it'll I, be available. I would like to have that stack of police, mm -hmm. uh, police reports if possible. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do we know who is going to be in attendance? I don't have the confirmed attendance just yet. Okay. My apologies to everyone that I won't be at the meeting. So well, we'll carry there. your thoughts. I watched uh, the Meeting that I missed, you all looked terrific. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Walter. And, and, all right. Anything else? Anything else we should know about coming up? All right. I'll I don't think so. No. Take a motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn, please. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Close.